Okay, so there's been lots of trade chatter floating around lately about several Montreal Canadian players, which, hey, is nothing that we're all not used to already. I've been reading that David Savard is being linked to the Ottawa Senators, I've read that the Colorado Avalanche are interested in Sean Monaghan already, and I've also been hearing that the Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers are both interested in freight train Josh Anderson. Now, whether or not any of this is true, I mean, we don't really know. But in this hero video, I'm going to focus on the Josh Anderson trade talk because this one seems a little more conflicting for Hebs fans. Now, in case you're wondering where all this Josh Anderson trade talk even came from, well, there's journalists in Calgary claiming that the Flames have been expressing interest in this guy for quite some time now. We've got caveman Elliot Friedman confirming that the Flames have been actively seeking a goal scoring forward since like August. And then we got big George LaRock saying that he's heard reports from both Calgary and Edmonton that Anderson has been on their radar. So I guess maybe now that Evander Kane is out of the lineup long term in Edmonton, Josh Anderson over here is one of the few guys in the league that still plays that power forward rugged style of play. And this is the exact reason why a lot of Habs fans would rather let a fox chew their nuts off than watch this player slip away out west. So let's go ahead and weigh out some of the pros and cons of Josh Anderson right now, starting with the pros. Number one. He's big and he's fast, two very important factors in today's NHL, and when he's in the mood, he can drive the puck to the net. He's a very effective player when he wants to be. Number two, his shot, okay, he's got a wicked shot, it's his bread and butter, one flick of the wrist, and there's trouble for the goaltenders. Number three, he is tough as nails. He can hang in there with just about anybody. The guy had the stones to drop the gloves with Big Z just a few years back, and he didn't look too bad at all. And number four, he's good on the four chick. All right, sometimes he flips a switch and he goes all kamikaze on any team that's not wearing a Habs jersey. And when he puts all these tools together on this list, he's worth beyond his weight in gold. But unfortunately, this is not always the case. Moving on to the cons now. Number one, he doesn't always look engaged, okay? There's some games where he doesn't do anything that I just mentioned, and because of this, he just becomes a streetlight out there, okay? He just exists. Number two, he's not the greatest passer, and this is fine when he sticks to his strengths and utilizes his shot. Nobody really cares about this when he's on his game. But then you get these games where, you know, he's not noticeable at all, and he goes full Ray Charles when there's teammates wide open. Yeah, and sometimes that can be an issue. Number three, he gets injured quite a bit. Knock on wood, it hasn't really happened long term this season. But in the past, you know, there's been a few games where he's been involved in some pretty big train wrecks. It's kind of scary. And finally, number four, his cap hit. The most important one of all for many fans. Anderson's going to be 29 years old in May. He's making $5.5 million on average right up until the 2027-2028 season. And while this may not be too big of an issue right now in the present, give it a few years and it could be a real gut punch. Just saying. Now, so far this season, Josh Anderson has five goals. He's got two assists, giving him seven points in 16 games. He looked really effective during the first couple of games of the season when he was on a line with Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield, but since then, he's been kind of... Bleh. Nothing really to brag about. But still, okay, he's a guy that you like to have in your lineup, you know what I mean? Josh Anderson is just... he's different. Let's take Yoel Armia, for instance. Okay, there's days I feel like beating the shit out of Armia with a phone book. But I never get that with Josh Anderson. I'm just a little more relaxed with him. Because I see him more as a protector for the Cubs. Now, as for a potential return. Even though, you know, he gets ripped to shreds sometimes by Canadians fans. I think Josh Anderson is worth uh, a hefty penny in a trade. Probably more than we believe. He's a dying breed, guys. And this is exactly the kind of guy that you want to take on a deep playoff run with your team. 
It's just a term that's the issue. And I mean, Kent Hughes has already addressed rumors like these last season about Anderson. And Hughes pretty much said like, hey, Anderson right now is considered a part of the future moving forward. He's not actively trying to ship him out of town. So it's probably going to take quite a bit just to get him out of here. So the real question is, the teams that are interested, supposedly the Flames and the, the Oilers, are they going to be willing to give up a full big bag of future goodies just to get their hands on Josh Anderson's five goals and physical play? Just saying, it's not impossible because some of these teams, you know, they got their backs against the walls right now. There's injuries and they need to make a good impression on the fans. But I'd be really, really surprised if a team actually offered enough for Kent Hughes to force his hand to part ways with Anderson. The freight train. Just saying. This guy is the protector of the pops. You let me know what you think down in the comment section because that does it for this video. Don't forget to thumb the like button on the way out of here. And hey, I'll see you next time.